In today's video, we're going to be having a look at five new features in the 2023.5 update. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. In last month's video, I had a whole bunch of comments saying things like, Where's all the new voice content? I thought this was the year of the voice. There's still no new voice content. There's lots of Rio Link features, but there's no new voice things. What's going on? Well, the reason for this was because the guys over at Home Assistant were actually at hard work on all of the new features and functionality. And all of those features and functionality were actually shown off in a live streamed event last week for the chapter two year of the voice. In that live stream, Paulus and Mike run through all of the new features and functionality, and they also run through a couple of really cool demos. And if you are interested in checking out everything that was announced, then be sure to check the link in the description and you can go and watch the whole event. And if you're just interested in a little snippet of what actually happened, a quick overview and a quick run through, then I actually created a little video on this where I just ran through all of those new features. So you can check that out and you can find out everything in about 10 minutes. The main focus for this update is obviously all of the new voice features, but these features have already been covered in a dedicated live stream and also in a quick 10 minute video that I did. So rather than run through them all again and just assign them all as individual features, I mean, we only get five features in a five feature video and there is a lot of them. So rather than just running through them all again, I'm just gonna group them all together and just call it one big voice feature. And there is a lot of features in there. We've got things like, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, both of which can also be local, by the way, voice pipelines, new voice controls, local and cloud voices, VoIP, Wyoming, a brand new ESP Home update that actually allows us to create our own voice assistants, and many, 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 many more voice things. So that's our first feature. So with all of that grouped up into one nice feature, let's move on to our second feature. And this second feature is gonna kind of be two features in one. So we'll call this one feature two and feature three. But this one is the brand new voice assistant option. So for feature two, we've got the new assistance page. So over on our settings page, we'll have this brand new option for voice assistants. And if we select this, this will take us into the new voice assistant page. And from here, we can just choose to set up and configure all the different parts for a voice assistant. You can edit any existing ones that you currently have set up, or if you want to add a new one, you can set up and configure all of the parts for it. You can set a friendly name, you can set its language, you can set the conversation agent, you can set the text to speech, and also the speech to text options. Everything you need is all in this page, and if you are interested in playing around with any of the voice assistant stuff, then this is a page you'll quickly be familiar with. Coming off the back of feature two, we've got feature three, which is expose. So at the top of that page we were just looking at, there's an option for expose. And if you select that, that will take us to a list of all of the different entities that we currently have exposed to our voice assistants. From here, we can see a list of all the different entities and we can choose to modify them as a group or as individuals. But we can see the entity, we can see the area that the entity's in, we can see any assistance that the entity may be exposed to. And at the time of recording, currently those options are just Home Assistant Assist, Amazon Echo and Google Home. And for each of those, you'll see a little icon next to that entity. So it's just a nice clear indicator for anything it's exposed to. You'll also be able to view any aliases that the entity may have. And the last option you have is to just remove that entity entirely. So that will just remove it from being exposed to any of the assistants. If you select an individual entity, it'll open up this small dialogue that will give you access to four different toggles and the ability to add aliases. The first toggle will allow you to toggle on or off all of the different voice assistants. And then the other toggles allow you to fine grain the entity so you can set which individual assistants you want the entity to be exposed to. The final option that you have in that small dialogue is the ability to add an alias. At the time of recording this, aliases are still only supported by Assist and Google Assistant. To add an alias, you simply click the add alias button and you can then just type out any alias that you want that entity to have. Just like with the voice assistant page, I really like the way that this has been set up and how we can now configure all of the different entities. This is so much better than how it used to be. And you may remember that previously before this update, all of those settings for being able to expose entities was all hidden away underneath the Home Assistant Cloud options. So it's nice that it's got its own dedicated place to do all of these things. And that's not all for Expose. 
Because Expose has its own dialog, if you select an entity from anywhere in Home Assistant, you'll now see it's got an option for voice assistants. And if you select this, it will open up that voice assistant dialog where you can choose to expose it and add an alias or from the current position you are in Home Assistant. And I think that that's a really nice touch. It saves you having to hop around different menus or having to head back into that voice assistant page. And this is actually a feature that I requested and added to my little Home Assistant features for the year. So I'm really glad that this one's in there now. Up next, we've got our fourth feature. And this one may appeal to some people more than others, but it's the ability to be able to turn on and off the action lights on your Home Assistant yellow devices. If we head into our settings and select system and then hardware, we'll have an option to configure our Home Assistant yellow. Selecting this will give us another couple of options and the one that we'll care about is the option to configure hardware settings. And when we select this, we'll get a small dialog that will allow us to turn on and off the different LEDs. And as I said, this one may be appealing to some more than others. Maybe you've got the Home Assistant yellow in your bedroom and you don't wanna see those lights flickering on and off all the time, then you can just go in there and turn it off. If you do turn off or change any of those settings, you will need to reboot the Home Assistant Yellow before they take effect, but if you wanted to turn those lights off, you, you can now. My fifth and final feature then is webhooks. In this update, webhooks have received a bit of love and they've gained some nice new features. The first new feature is the ability to set the get HTTP method on a webhook, so you can now use gets in your webhooks. The other nice enhancements that webhooks have received are the ability to specify if it can only be triggered while it's on a local network. So this might be something you want to use if you've got different services in your home lab or different services you're running on your network and you only want those webhooks to be accessible and triggerable on that set network. So that's something that you can now do. And there we go guys, in a roundabout way that's been five new features that have been added to this update. If you did enjoy this video then don't forget to drop me a like and if you're not already, hit the subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. Remember, if you want to check out any of the voice things in a bit more detail, then be sure to check out the Home Assistant live stream. Or if you want a quick overview where I run through all the features, be sure to check out that video that I created. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons and also my YouTube members. And if you are interested in helping support my channel, which in turn allows me to create content like this, then you'll find links to all of those places in the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.